My name is Tom Kirchmer. I'm part of the Corporate Governance Group here at the LSE. And I have with me here Vinnie Adams from UNSW in Sydney in Australia, all the way. Thanks for coming all, uh, all the way to us. So she's a specialist on gender issues. And the big question is, gender is everywhere in the press, will women rescue our economies? Are they really kind of making the difference in terms of performance? Well, first of all, Tom, <clears throat> let me say thank you very much for inviting me. And uh, I think I brought the good weather with me. So uh, in regards to your question, I would say, of course. <laughs> Women can rescue us. Uh, the question is uh, how they can do it. How do they do it then? So is it really about, you know, they making all the difference in terms of performance? Or is it just firms that have more women um, in, in, the, in, in the organization and also on the board that they are just healthier organizations? So that's a good question. So a lot of people argue that there's a business case for female directors. Um, that's actually one of the main motivations for many of the recent policy uh, reforms, advocating targets for boardroom diversity. Uh, but I would actually argue that there's no evidence that there is a business case. So firms with more female directors will not perform better necessarily. They can, but not necessarily. Uh, but that doesn't mean that diversity is not valuable. So I think what has to be um, in place is the right conditions for women to actually have an impact. How do we achieve this as a society? So I think, first of all, we need to make sure that women are supported that there's policies that uh, support women in actually achieving their potential. So just having, for example, quotas that say firms need to have more women on the board is not going to actually help women solve the problems that made it difficult for them to be in the board in the first place. So the reason we don't have many women on boards right now is because there's problems for women to balance work and family life, for example. And um, just having board quotas is not going to solve that problem. So I think we need sort of a comprehensive package of policies that try and eliminate some of these barriers to boardrooms for women. Because they have kids, women have kids, or is it because society is somehow um, sexist? I think both of those are going on. So in some work that I'm going to be talking about tonight, uh, during my lecture on myths and facts about female directors, uh, I'm going to show that there's evidence for both cultural barriers and mm -hmm. for just simple, um, you know, family-friendly policies that could be rectified uh, and that are not necessarily, I mean, the policies may be a function of cultural barriers, uh, but not necessarily a function of these. So what are the big myths about boardroom diversity? Uh, so first, the one myth is that we know exactly what the problem is. Okay, so there's a lot of surveys out there that say, um, you know, f women are underrepresented on boards, uh, and I would agree with those surveys. However, I would also say that the numbers are overstated. So the situation is actually much, much worse than people say it is. And the reason is that most of these surveys look at large firms and not small firms. And as soon as you look at the more comprehensive sample, you find that um, the situation is much worse. A uh, second myth is uh, one of my favorites, and this is the argument that the crisis would not have happened if Lehman Brothers had been Lehman Sisters. So I would actually argue that women can also cause a crisis. And uh, then uh, there's a myth that, you know, as soon as women make it into the boardroom, they're just like men, right? And so if that's true, then there's actually no value to diversity because women are just the same. Uh, and that's one of the myths that I'm going to argue is not true. So women are still different from men, even when they're in the boardroom. And then uh, there's also this widespread idea, uh, especially, I think, in the minds of policymakers, that um, basically HR directors are to blame for the problems. So the reason that women are not actually on boards of firms is because uh, hiring practices are not transparent, there's discrimination in hiring. Uh, and like I said before, I would argue that uh, a lot of the reasons women are not on boards are societal and not necessarily the fault of companies. Then there's the myth about uh, the business case. So, you know, you add a woman to the board and shareholder value increases automatically. So that's definitely a myth. It can increase for some firms, but for other firms not. And um, I think it's logical that, you know, just by virtue of their gender alone, uh, women cannot 
uh, increase firm performance. And uh, finally, there's this idea that quotas are necessary. And so I would argue that the evidence suggests that quotas are not the only way to achieve uh, more boardroom representation for women. Why do we focus this, in this debate so much on boards and not about you know, career choices, career abilities of women? Isn't the problem starting much earlier? Definitely. So the problem starts much earlier. I think one reason why people look at boards is because it's easy to measure what's going on at the board level. But it's very difficult to get data on the pipeline. So what happens to women as from the point they enter into the workforce to when they actually achieve the board position or don't achieve the board position. Uh, so I think that's one reason why people look at boards, which is obviously not a good way to design policy. It's just because we happen to be able to measure it. Does that mean we should only look at boards? No, not necessarily. So what's your outlook on this debate? Well, I think it's great that there is a debate. Um, that's fantastic, but I think in going forward, I think the debate needs to become more scientific. So there's a lot of um, politics, a lot of wishful thinking in the debate, uh, a lot of stereotypes. Uh, part of the debate is basically using stereotypes to advance women, and I don't think that that does women a favor. And um, so we need to become more scientific and more evidence-based and uh, start thinking about what are actual barriers to women achieving board positions and becoming more productive members of society. Thank you very much, Renee. So as Renee said, there will be a lecture tonight, which will also be recorded and available on uh, the LSE's YouTube channel. Thank you.